Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to show you some of the items we've been selling lately. I just picked some random items. I haven't shown any in a video lately. I do show those on Instagram under the Auction Professor if you haven't checked that page out. But let's hop over now and show you what we're selling. Now this first item here, I have a video on just this item, IDing it and identifying it and getting some money out of it. I paid a dollar for this in another video, one of my haul videos that I got. It was mixed in with some CDVs. It did sell for $587. It's a very unique image, something very specialized, so it took the right person to find it. So I'm happy with that. I let it run for a little while. Very happy with the sale. Again, a dollar investment here. Now this next one is a trade card, but what's special about this one is it has a baseball game taking place on the front of the card, as you can see. It went for $125. Now oysters, oyster anything, postcards, advertising, pamphlets, papers, print ads, anything like that with oysters in it will sell also. I covered that in a video in the past also. This one has a double interest. That's why it went for so much money. I just have a couple bucks into it. Now this card and another card I had for a little while, I have a few bucks into each one of these. This one did go for 150 bucks. It's very unique. It was found with some postcards. It's almost identical in size to a vintage postcard. So easy pick up here on this one. I knew what it was. It's actually engraved. You can feel the ink on the front of the card. Very, very fine one. Now here's another one from the same source found the exact same way. Again, just a few bucks in either one of these, and this one sold for $150 as well. Now, this one and a couple other ones from the same Lilliputian Opera Company sold at the same time frame. So this one went for $95, and then I sold another one of these for $95. This is a little bigger than a trade card. This was purchased at an auction probably a year or more ago. I bought a whole bunch of paper and there was a couple of these. Now one of these was damaged beyond belief. It has a big chunk out of the one side. Had that not been damaged, I probably would have gotten more for it. I just threw it in with this lot. This is like a sideshow circus performer kind of thing as well. So it's got again a double interest on this. Now this next one here, I spent 20 bucks on a whole box of these same manuals here. I've been selling them left and right. I only have a couple more of these left. We've probably got around $240 back in profit after all the fees, labor, everything's said and done. So nice pickup here as well. Now this next one is a 8x10 photo, a real photo advertising piece. It did sell for $34.50. A Harry Belafonte collector purchased it. Rather interesting. On average, I'm selling two or three of these 8x10s every single day of the month lately. Now here's another pickup I got for a dollar at a flea market. You can see me buying this in one of my other videos as well. It did sell full price $45. No offer was put in. Very happy with this one here. These are catching on in value, especially the sealed ones. And I do find this sort of thing at flea markets and secondhand places. They think they're just junk these days. Now, this postcard and the next postcard I bought in a haul, I paid 50 cents or a dollar a piece for them. So I made between this one and the next one, you'll get to see $15 profit. I sold each one for $9.99. So after all my fees and everything is said and done, I still made 15 bucks on this one and this one here as well. Now this next piece here is a ring that I got in a jewelry haul, and that's in another video as well. I paid a dollar for the ring, a nickel or a quarter for the other little pin there. This is Order of the Moose. The ring is pretty well worn. Had the image not be worn down so much, I probably would have got double that for it. I put it up high. I wasn't too worried about it selling. I turned down a few offers, and I just settled on 25 now here is a plush, a 69 cent plush. It did go for 75 bucks, it's from 97. So it's a nice piece here as you can see. It still has the tags and the tags were not messed up. So things like this always sell for us. Top dollar, no offers made, just sold. It was up for two months. Now here's another postcard again. This is a dollar pickup. I purchased this at a antique mall for a dollar. It did sell for $87.50. It's a Reeves tractor, a very early kind. And the location is written on the back of this as well. Now here's an American cinematographer from 1982. I put this one up much higher than anybody else had them up because the series is out right now. So the Dark Crystal was turned into a TV series, if you didn't know that. It did sell for $45. Bucks. I 
paid a dollar for this, as well as a whole bunch of other American cinematographers. These have been selling ever since I bought that lot and listed them. So very happy with the sale on these. Again, I have nothing into any of these magazines at this point. Next one is a lot of three Hawaiian records, and I paid like a quarter a piece for these. Hawaiian records just don't sell very well. So I'm happy with selling these for 30 bucks, 10 bucks a disc. So can't go wrong with that. Now here is a feature matchbook or a matchbook with writing on each one of the matches. I show this in a haul as well. I think I paid a dollar for it. Uh, shipping and all, it went out for 25 bucks. So very fine with that. No problems whatsoever. It went surface, ground, no big deal. Now here is a Jesse Pearson. This is a popcorn. Now you can hear this one on YouTube. Talk to me, baby. It's popcorn. If you listen to it, you'll understand why it's called popcorn. At least I would hope you would. It did sell for 35 bucks overseas to England, and then they spent $14 and some odd cents to ship it first class international. Now here's a reel-to-reel -reel advertising with a catalog advertising what other uh, reel-to-reels this company had. This one sold for $35. Very happy with that. I spent five bucks in a haul video. You can see me literally purchasing this along with many others. We've made now from these reel-to-reels around 600 and some odd dollars profit after everything is said and done. We've been selling a couple every month since we got them. So literally it's just free money coming in whenever one of these sells. Now here's a Teal Talisman Empire Airways. This is an overseas label. It did sell for $24.50. Um, it's just a typical luggage label, um, three inches by almost four inches. I buy these a lot at local live auctions or pickers bring them to me in big bulk quantities. They'll save up for months sometimes before I see them and then they'll bring me a whole bunch of these and then I'll just buy them in a big lot if I'm lucky enough. Now this next one's a measurement device for, I would guess, quilting or something along that line. I bought these at a thrift store, again, in one of our haul videos. All the ones I couldn't sell on Amazon, I listed on eBay. I don't think I have any more of these left. I paid a dollar or two for each one. So every one of these I sell, I'm making a $15 profit or better. Now some of these I've sold for almost $50 a piece. Still again, I only paid a dollar or two. Now I don't mind if these sit right now with eBay giving out listings. This is just a free listing for me anyway. Now here's a dollar pickup. It's a 1943 recruitment booklet for the Navy. It did sell for $34.50. Again, very happy with that sale. I can't complain whatsoever. Now here's another one. This is another Navy recruiting booklet. Um, goes in a little more detail. I guess Shoemaker is the city. It's got a map of the base. $24.50 on this one. Again, another dollar purchase. This was bought at a junk store or something somewhere. I, I buy this stuff in bulk. Many times my pickers will bring me boxes of this. Or I'll put a bunch of stuff together at an estate sale and then walk out of there with about a dollar average price into these. Again, live auctions are great. Flea markets. Now here is an advertising card for the Walworth County Fair in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. This one sold for $52.50. Not in the best condition. It has some issues with it. So I was happy with uh, letting them have it for a cheaper price. I originally had it up for $75. So $52.50 is fine. I've got a dollar or two, I think, into this, as most of my items are. Now, pen-wise, I showed some pens and pencils that I bought. I've bought several other lots since that video went up. I've sold a few of these that paid for the entire purchase of all of the pens that I have. So every one of these pens that I sell is all profit at this point. And I've sold many. I'm going to just show you a few. They are all went to the same person. I let them have four different pens for $25 a piece. Pens, pencils, I don't remember. I think this is a pencil. So this is one. They're all from Dickerson, Tennessee. It wasn't that they were pens. It was what was on them. I don't really worry about pens, pencils, or anything like that as long as the advertisement on it is good. This is Lion Oil, Lion Motor Oil Company. It's an advertisement for one of their lubrications for engines and things like that. Another one, Dixon, Tennessee as well. This is the co-op. And then finally, one more co-op pen. They bought one of each that I had from the area. And I have a couple more left from here with watchers on them as well. So this, again, is just profit. I have nothing whatsoever into this. We've sold enough pens in the first day or two that I listed them that I got all my money back and made a profit right off the bat. All paid for, done. So this is all just gravy again. Next one is 78 record. Again, I paid a dollar for this one here. I sold it for 35. The little Ford rambled right along. Billy Murray is the performer on this one. Very well known. He sang with other folks as well. 
He also went under different names. Now, this is a Batwing Victor. You can see the Batwing at the top of the label. That is why it's called a Batwing. It comes out around the World War I or just a hair afterwards in that range. Now, this next one's a postcard. It's a real photo, real picture postcard, Pismo Beach, California. Most California postcards that I get that are something like this always sell for good money. It did sell for $40.25. Another dollar pickup here. Most of the postcards I pay a dollar or less, all the way down to just a few pennies when I buy them, say, 10000 at a time or big bulk purchases of postcards. Now, here's a very interesting piece. This is a Remington Firearms card. This gentleman, this Lamberson, was a dealer for him in Wisconsin, the only one available. So rather interesting, unique item here. This one did sell for 75 bucks. It was up for a while. It's got some issues on it. It's been trimmed, it looks like, and a few other things. So I'm fine with that. It's not a specifically a Remington card itself. It's a card for Mr. Lamberson. So had this been just a... Remington card itself just advertising Remington shotguns on their own and showing a picture it would have went for a lot more money We've sold like Springfield cards and things like that for Springfield rifles All of those go for at least a hundred bucks on any of those had this been a postcard same basic principle Had this been an envelope or something with the same basic type of advertisement same basic price range as well Now here's another pickup this one was a dollar in a bag with several other items So I sold two other items out of this bag this one went for $15 this is nothing more than a men's tie clip to hold your tie onto your shirt. It's got a Chinese dragon with a piece of jade on it. Very happy with that. Again, that one bag I got for a dollar. We've made $47 profit after everything's said and done, labor paid for, and the whole work. So very happy with $47 return on this type of investment. And I think I still have two more of these tie tacks to sell. Last one here is a sheet music as well, Little Nemo Fairy Tales. I think I took 30 bucks on this one also. It's rather cute. Now, I think I paid a dollar for this one. I've had a couple of these. This one always sells. They always sell. I don't care if it sets for a little while. I still will get good money for it almost any time. Little Nemo is a classic. It's just simply collected by too many people not to be worth something. This is a 1906 large format sheet music version of it. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. I got a letter here for somebody from Springfield. Springfield? I'm from Springfield, Massachusetts, and the bell in your bell. There's no place I'd rather be. I'm from Springfield, Pennsylvania, and there's been a mistake. This letter is apparently for me. I'm from Springfield, Arizona, and I want you to know I've been waiting for this letter since a week and ago. Oh, what you need to do to send a letter my way when I'm from Springfield, USA. I have looked into this problem, and I'm telling you, boy, there are very many cities with identical names, and Springfield is not the least of these. There are 24 Springfields causing postal delays, and they're all abbreviated with a two-letter phrase. Oh, oh what did it do, do to send a letter my way when I'm from Springfield, USA? There's a Springfield R and a Springfield O, a Springfield Flaw and a Springfield Mo. A Springfield Ill and a Springfield Id. A Springfield Kai and a Springfield Sid. There's a Springfield Nib and a Springfield Dog. There's a Springfield Nidge and a Springfield Pa. There's, There's a Springfield Or and a Leaven more. If you really feel like keeping score, oh, oh, what could you do to send a letter my way when I'm from Springfield, Springfield Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Springfield. Springfield.